This is Quality Assured Films. Welcome back to Quality Assured Films. I'm John. I'm Mike, and welcome to our new series where John and I record via Zoom. What That's right. We're... <laughs> Isn't it? <neat>? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be doing weekly episodes where we just check in with you give you some updates behind the scenes of what we're working on, what's coming up, other things that we're watching and reading and playing, uh, inspired by one of my favorite channels, K uh, cartoonist Kayfabe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. So th this was kind of an opportunity for us to have a weekly check-in go up on the channel because a lot of times our videos take a long time to make. Yeah. And uh, wanted to be able to put something out more regularly that everyone could keep up with, even if a full, fully full blown produced episode wasn't going to come out uh, every week. I'm very excited about that. And this is awesome, man, because I get to see you. We haven't seen each other in person in forever. I know, I miss you. I miss you. <laughs> um, what week is it, John? Uh, it is well. Let me think. Days, they they still matter. They there's there's Mondays, and then today's Wednesday. Wednesday. It's the week of the eleventh of May, twenty twenty. That's day, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like days. What fifty something of the the pandemic? Maybe more. I'm I'm losing track. Yeah. Um, we've been home since. Uh, actually, it was March thirteenth. I think was the first day that we were home. So. Wow. That's crazy. Been a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's going on? What's new? Uh, what's new? Yeah, I was thinking uh, what we could do is talk a little bit about the episodes that we have coming up that, are, that we're working on right now. And the first one is 2016. Yes, the Decade in Review series that we're working on. So we have 2016, 2017, and 2018. Because we're not going to do 2019 like we mentioned. We already right. did our, our best of. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, no, it's coming along very well. Uh, 2016 will probably be out um, tomorrow, which is Thursday. I'm very excited for that. A couple more tweaks to it, but it's looking good. Awesome. It's a Thank bigger... you. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a bigger year, too, by the way, compared to what was it? 2015 was very, very short. But 2016, we had a lot. So. Oh, yeah. And yeah, just like you said, then 2017, 2018 will be next. Then we're finally going to uh, move on to 2020 because there's a shit ton of things that are coming out. Like obviously not in the, the movie theaters, other than earlier in the year. But yeah, we'll do a, do a couple episodes on that. I, I think you wanted to get back into TV talk too. And some yeah, I was thinking uh, because this was this is kind of a good time. I mean, it's a terrible time, right? But the only upside is it's a good time to catch up on media. Because not a lot of movies are coming out. Um, definitely not to theaters. If yeah. they haven't been pushed back, they're coming out on demand. Um, but there's very few that adapted quickly enough to to get into that model. Um, so this is a good time to be catching up on things. And plus, if you're you know you're quarantining, you're staying at home, you have a lot. You, you, there's a lot to sift through, right? Yep. I'll say, and so I wanted to point everyone back to we did a couple episodes. Uh, we did, I should say, a few episodes, three or more, on TV and YouTube recommendations from uh, 2019, and those would be good episodes to revisit if you are looking for what to add to your watch list. Definitely, yeah. Those were the ones too where we were like. We're gonna shift and talk to each other side by side, and in our our back lot. So oh yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the start of our of our experimenting over the last year with yeah. our format, this included. Right, going back real quick to what you were talking about with um, you know, the cinemas doing the on demand stuff. I'd be curious, how are you feeling about that? I mean, obviously we can't go into a movie theater, but I'm loving this whole you know, it's coming out uh, to your home this Friday. Trolls World Tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say that particular movie interested me. 
but it is really interesting to see how quickly um I love well I love going to the movie theater. I was going to say like how quickly theaters were abandoned. Yeah. Uh obviously I want to support our local theaters. Um not, you know, the the huge chains. Right. But uh I love I mean I love going to the movies. That's one of my favorite parts of it is being in the theater. And so I'm definitely missing that. But I can't argue with the convenience of going. Maybe there are some movies that I would have made a financial decision that I'm not going to spend 20 bucks on this outing between popcorn, water, gas, going the ticket being, you know, 10, 15 bucks or whatever. Yep. Uh, I mean, usually I go to matinees anyway, so it's not as expensive, but it's certainly much more convenient to just turn on my TV and, you know, pay six bucks for the rental and watch it immediately. I hope that that doesn't, from an accessibility standpoint, you know, from like people that might be living with disabilities that have streaming services that's like not a huge deal you know and i'm probably not the authority to be talking about that but i think all all those costs that i talk about are a barrier of entry to people plus the accessibility factor like this probably is a better situation for more people so like obviously i want the most people to be able to watch movies Mm -hmm. uh so i think that's really great i just hope that our you know a lot of the move a lot of the smaller movies independent movies art art house stuff that we've been able to go to our local theater and watch i hope those don't go away because they don't have the distribution that the blockbuster movies have to be able to be streaming yeah no that's a good point um I agree with you with the convenience and I, 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 just like you probably, I miss being surrounded by people when something's funny in a movie or, or, or jumping together or just people annoying the fuck out of me and talking down the aisle. <laughs> I, I don't mind it. I'll take it back, please. Um, but yeah, it's nice. But at the same time, I, I miss it. I want to go back. Yeah. I mean, I also don't have a 40 foot screen in my house. So <laughs> that hurts too. Oh, I was going to say, I don't. You made it sound like I do. I'm like, what? I do? No, no, I'm saying as opposed to the theater. Yeah. And Adobe Atmos. Atmos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, the thing I don't miss, uh, I don't miss 30 minutes of previews. I know that previews are some people's favorite parts of the movies, but I just seriously do not care. They used to be uh, my, my favorite part, and then oh, <laughs> yeah, but, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I started going to Movie Tavern, which is a place where they literally serve you food. So what they decide to do is not only keep the lights on during the trailers, but then they they have the volume so low, so you're not you don't even get to see it. And then you got somebody in your face going, "Did you want um ta- the tacos with the the? Come on, I want to watch a movie. I don't want to order tacos." Yeah, I could not. I could not get into the movie. T- the movie tavern like we deliver your food to you i've tried it many times i think it's a complete (laughs) disaster yeah people servers are walking in front of you the whole movie people are dropping stuff on the floor people are munching right next to you silverware Uh, (laughs) silverware on plates oh my god Uh. it's a nightmare for me so i could not get into that but I, I do the dinner separately, yeah. and then I do the movie. Right. Not not both simultaneously. Although, being at home now, that is certainly another convenience. Right? Um, yeah, so I think... I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but definitely interesting to see how this all shakes out with the with the industry. Yeah, absolutely.
I mean, depending on how much longer, I mean, not only were movies that were going to be coming out were delayed, but movies that were in production had all their productions shut down. So yeah. like so much stuff that was in the pipeline, we're not going to see for a, even longer now. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, it's going to get to a point. Remember the writer's strike? Was that 2006 or something? Like that? <laughs> I do. That's when a few of the shows I w- was watching went to shit. Yeah. <laughs> Previously uh, on Heroes. <laughs> yeah, Heroes. <laughs> Chuck. Chuck! Oh! <laughs> You're right. Those are the ones that come t- immediately to mind. But yeah, yeah, so many were lost then. That's crazy. But uh, yes, we have some things coming up, um, some great 2020 movies, even some 2019 movies that we never talked about, which I want to tell you, because obviously this isn't an episode right now that we're talking about films, but uh, I will be starting something tonight that you've been asking me to watch for a while. And no, it's not uh, Inception. Um, <laughs> Inter- it's not Interstellar? Oh, I'm sorry, Interstellar. I fucking, I got so, why'd you get my hopes up like that? It's uh, um, the uh, Skywalker chick. Yeah, the rise of the Skywalker. Oh Finally. wow, yeah, we never did an episode on that. Nope, nope. So. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'll save. I'll That's save my favorite. comments. Yep. Yes. Um. Speaking of future episodes, so yeah, so once we're done with uh the the decade, the our series on the best of the decade, then we'll move on to twenty twenty. Speaking of future episodes, I wanted to talk about some of the stuff, some of the ideas for the future. Uh, I was wondering if you had any, and, and what I'm talking about is either segments on our show or ideas for the channel or ideas for episodes or anything like that. Yeah, I know we, we were talking before. Um, there's been some requests if I'm not mistaken, to do, like, episodes based on genre, like comedy, action, adventure, sci-fi, stuff like that, and, you know, go through, not necessarily through the years, but give our top whatever, five, ten movies. Uh, I agree, that'd be that'd be pretty fun to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. So, look forward to some, some you know, the internet loves a list. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool. hoping... Yeah, I'm hoping that brings us uh, some more clicks. Maybe you know, it's not all about the clicks, but we can we can help ourselves here or there. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, I'm shiny. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm bright like uh, a Frampton. Sorry. <laughs> I think the other thing with that is we never really we tend to do movies that are either coming out when we're recording the episode like they're they're newly out and we're talking about them or depending on our production schedule they're newly out on blu-ray and we're talking about them right uh or we're we're doing like our um like our decade series where we're talking about we're going by year Mm -hmm. but we've never just like you said we've never really done by genre so that that suggestion actually came from my buddy eric who uh and I thought that was a really good idea because that might allow people to get a better idea of our tastes and it'll allow us to talk about movies that I'm sure most of the movies that we might put on those lists might not even have come out in the last 10 years. Oh yeah, no, you're right. So that'll allow us, I think, to talk about some older movies from previous decades that we don't really ever do. You know, we had some peppered in the earlier episodes, but never never with that never with such a focus on them right exactly i think that might be kind of cool yeah that'll be fun looking forward to doing that cool i was also thinking um we plugging our email more uh Hmm. well i say more but I, i really should say at all uh we also have a email address it's quality assured films at gmail.com i don't know you know that but uh, I'm going to start bringing that up more in our episodes. Uh, okay. Maybe we can get some questions. What I mean, what I mean by that is for people to send in questions, and maybe we could do like a Q and A, pun intended. 
oh. segment. <laughs> Q&A. I know I agree. And even, um, you know, even just feedback, if they want to put that, that's fine too. Just any, any yeah. communication. Yeah, and I may not, uh, you know, we'll obviously filter through them, but... Uh, right, we're just going to leave them live on air. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Um, cool. cool. Um, another idea I had was to add a pronoun check to the to our intros. Oh. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure what it means. You know, I don't know if it's as meaningful if uh to <laughs> cis het white guys do it. <laughs> right. Cause, uh... Well, first, why don't you explain real quick what that is to anybody that may not know? Okay, sure. So uh, I was thinking, um, and this was kind of inspired by a podcast I listened to called Well, There's Your Problem, which is uh, on YouTube, a podcast with slides. And uh, they, they do a pronoun check at the start of every episode, and they just go around and say, like, for example, I'm Mike, my pronouns are he or him. He and him. Right. And then each person goes around and says what their pronouns are so nobody has to guess. And and it's like, you know, I put in my Twitter bio just like something to do to uh, normalize that practice in support of like non-binary trans like people who use different who might use different pronouns than we might be accustomed to. Okay. Or, yeah. or that you might assume off the top of your head. So even though it's just the two of us doing it, uh, I figure that might be good to to use that practice and start doing that. What do you think about that? I'm down. I'm down. And yeah, like you said, even though we're both, we're both he and him, um, mm -hmm. like you said, make it kind of like a, a normal thing to do. That way, when people start watching stuff, they're like, oh, okay, good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay with Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. Um, something that I am going to try to do <laughs> by the next weekly update uh, is update our giant Excel sheet of all the movies that we've talked about on our show. <laughs> yeah. I love Excel wanted... sheet, by the way. I love that. Oh, good. <laughs> what I want to be able to do, I mean, it's as much for us. I mean, it is, you know, it's helpful to to us to know, you know, go back as a reference tool. Mm -hmm. But I would like to make it available for people to say, maybe, I mean, I want everyone to watch our old episodes, but maybe if someone is sitting down to watch something and they just go, oh, what did, what did John approve? What did Mike approve? Let me, what did, let me just look at this list really quick. Like yeah. we have an Excel sheet that tells you all that every movie we've talked about, what our ratings were, what the time code of the episode and what episode it was as yeah. well. That I like a lot too. Cause that makes it simple. Like, like, I mean, obviously please don't skip through our episodes unless you have absolutely have time. <laughs> but if you are like, I want to know about Zootopia, the two times they talked about it. <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me look at the, the sheet and let me go to that episode and this time code. So yeah. And you, of course, put that all together in, in your free time. So thank you. Yes. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. And then I let it go for <laughs> however <laughs> long. So yeah. that'll be a project for me to go and, and uh, catch up on Yeah. keeping that up to date. So I'm going to work on that. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. I know this is our first one. So bear with us, people. I hate when people say that. Bear with me. Bear with me. Listen, we got all these celebrities and all these people doing their shows like us, where it's a little grainy, and we get the cool things behind us, like you got the cool things behind you. So, I'm excited. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, yeah, I know, this is cool. I would say, I know we're coming at, at about 20 minutes almost right now. I'm going to cut that part out. I know we're coming towards the end. <laughs> I, no cutting, John! Not only was I in my mind when you're like, here's, you know, let me tell you our uh, email address. I'm thinking you said no cutting, no editing, but I'm going to pop that motherfucker somewhere. It's going to be like, <laughs> or we'll put it in the, in the bio. We'll put the link in the bio. So yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And I was thinking like, I'm going to bring it up when we record our next actual episode. Okay. So it won't, like, we'll have the opportunity to do that then. 
the, these are just going to be way more casual, less formal, um, less production heavy, right. <laughs> less post production heavy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so there, there were only a couple. I mean, the other thing I wanted to do was just kind of talk about some stuff that maybe won't make it into an episode that we've been watching. Do you want to still do that, or do we want to just call it at twenty minutes? Um, why don't we each throw one out, like at least one thing? Because I actually have something very interesting. Okay, I have a, I have like a ton. <laughs> I have so many things written down. Oh, it's okay. gonna be hard to pick one. Um, because then we could just make like the first part of next check in. Um, focus on that right away. So, like, do one now each and then go crazy next time. And... Okay. Sure. Sounds good. All right, let's do that then. All right, you go first. Cause mine's so <laughs> okay. All right. I, I just want to address the tiger in the room, oh. which is obviously everyone and their mother watched Tiger King on Netflix. Yep. And... There are. It became instantly a meme, and everyone is talking about Joe Exotic and whatever the peop other people's names are. Yep. And it, I so I'm like, when I saw like the, ch when I looked it up, I'm like, this looks like a big scam. Yeah. <laughs> And when I watched the series, it's a first of all, I'm like, oh, it's a documentary, like just like Netflix over the last, you know, five years or so has been getting into the business of true crime documentaries. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, this is one of those. And then I saw it's a series. There's like over 10 hours of this thing. And I watched it. And I just need to get out of my system that it really grossed me out and depressed me. And, like, I really didn't find it funny or meme-worthy to be making these people famous for being disgusting. Like, yeah. these people are... I, I mean, like, they try to pit the the show about being about this guy who has this this I, I don't uh, tiger breeding operation, multiple people who have this kind of operation and and pitting them and playing them off each other. And eventually the the frame the framing device of the show is, the main guy is in prison and it's like, why is he in prison? And he hates this other lady who's doing an extremely similar thing. Right. Uh, and, and you watch that play out, but these are like all terrible people who are abusing animals and, and taking advantage of and abusing all the people in their orbit. And it's just, you know, 10 hours of, of misery. And it really grossed me out to, to, to see the reaction of the, of the general public embracing this thing and then watching it and seeing how disturbing it was. And like, some of you need to like reevaluate <laughs> what, what your, your habits and what, what you think about when you're watching something like, it's this documentary and documentaries, you know, like there's an inherent bias there. There's, there's no such thing as like something that's objective truly, because you still have the voice of the creator who's making it. There's always some kind of goal that you're trying to show with the documentary. And when they would, th my biggest takeaway on Tiger King is that it is clearly sensationalist and that 
at no point do they cut away to animal experts, zoologists, conservationists. There's no experts ever being interviewed, talking, uh, giving the audience expert analysis and context for what they're watching. You are just watching the raw footage of the reality series that this guy filmed, the, mm -hmm. the, the Joe guy. And then the documentary crew is going around interviewing all the people involved with him. Right. Yep. Yep. It was so gross. And so I just needed to like get that off my chest that like, no, I will not be talking. You know, if we do another TV episode, there's what I thought of Tiger King. Right. It was like the biggest thing for a month or two. And so I felt like we have to address it. And I will not be talking about it on our normal show. And that is why. And I'm disappointed in all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I, I was like you two where I like I waited and I kept hearing all the hype. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this. I, I, I just don't want to watch it. Although I, Making a Murderer, I was obsessed with it. That was, well, at least the first season. I never saw anything after that. But um, I eventually, just like you, watched it. Now tell me this. You watched every episode, right? I did. What made you click next? on the like because i feel like for me i in the moment i was like what like i wanted to see and i was like number one these people were i don't want to say smart for filming literally everything and they film everything but yeah um, but in the moment i was just like i think i was caught up in the hype too so i was like by the end of the episode i'm like i, I need to know what happens and i kept going and going and then after it was over I, I felt pretty much exactly like you where i was like what the fuck did i just partake in like the the animal abuse above all is is ridiculous, and then the fucking people just, you know, you bring a little cub into a hotel room and you can pay twelve grand to go up to the room and pet it. Like, gee, fuck these people. Yeah, I mean, I think there's the, not only that, but then there's also this this through line of all of these people that they highlight taking advantage of people who are less fortunate and, and just using them for labor for whatever you can imagine people who have very few other options in their lives and just basic you know it's it, they're abusing them as well yeah no you're right and so both both of those stories, what kept me watching was, I mean, number one, yes, I also wanted to, I felt like I want to see the whole thing in order to be able to say, you know, like give my critique of it to, just in case came something else and, and those things I was looking for came in at some point later, but it doesn't ever uh and once the plot about um Carol Baskin yeah once once at, at a at a certain point the FBI gets involved and i wanted to see i basically wanted to see these people go down mm -hmm. uh and maybe they knew that, you know, like, as I say that, it makes me feel gross because maybe they knew that. Mm, yeah. You know, like, that's um, something that would get someone to keep watching. But I also, that was really a secondary reason. The, the main reason was I was like, well, I want to be able to know if at some point here, does anybody come in and give the viewer context? Because... All I'm seeing online is funny memes. And like, meanwhile, content warning, there's a suicide. Oh my God. That's kind of what I was alluding to a little bit earlier when I said they filmed everything. Like, like you don't physically see it, see it, but it's off camera. Yeah. Like, I, we don't you see somebody's see reaction to it. Yes. Yes. I, we don't uh, need that. You don't need to he, feel that he, feeling in your life. You can skip yeah. this one. <laughs> like, yeah. So I just wanted to give... I wanted to be 
somebody who is giving the counterpoint to say, no, Tiger King is really bad, actually. Uh, it's not it's not something that I feel should be like it's it, to me it's not something that's like oh this is so trashy let's like have fun watching this trashy show it's like no this is really m human misery and and gross animal abuse and and people's lives the, the people around these figures' lives falling apart. And uh, it was really disturbing. <laughs> so I just wanted to have some balance out there to be like, don't watch it. <laughs> right. If you haven't watched it yet, do not feel like you need to watch it. Like, it is not yeah, yeah something you know. that we should be, you know. Anyway. That was my rant. <laughs> Quality denied. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, my, mine's really quick. Mine's literally just finally after um, decades or decade. No, a little more than decades. Um, I was, uh, I don't want to say coursed into watching, but I, I finally saw The Notebook, which <laughs> I've seen bits and pieces of it. I've seen the ending. I've seen the twists and all that. But I finally sat down and I watched The Full Notebook. With my man Ryan Gosling and Amy McAdams? Nope. Yep. Yep. No, isn't it Rachel McAdams? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah Rachel. He was Amy Adams and Rachel McAdams. <sighs> did the fusion dance. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and it, it was amazing. It was it was amazing. I feel like an idiot. I feel like, why did I ignore this movie so long? It, the, the beauty, the love of them, the, the tragic. The tragedy. Now I want to read the book. I'm, I'm a big fan of reading books that are movies. In fact, if you look at my, my bookshelf, you can't really see, but down on the bottom row is like every book that ended up turning into a movie that I've, I've read. I like the, the comparison of the two. It's always cool to see. But yeah. Was that Nicholas Sparks who wrote that? It was, who I believe is a piece of garbage right uh, as of last year, right? Didn't it come out that he did some shit? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. Here's an article. No, I'm just kidding. We're not. Let's we're not look it up now. <laughs> Yay! I'm pretty sure he there was some sort of allegations or something against him, or or he was. I don't want to say. I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't know. He's looking it up. Mike's checking right now. But um. Uh, sought. What? What the fuck? Sought to ban a club for LGBT students at the North Carolina religious school he co-founded. That's what it was. Yep. I knew it was something. Yep. So, fuck you, Nicholas Sparks, but your movie is great. Oh, it's not even your movie. Hollywood bought that shit. Wow. I know. I knew it was something horrible. Um, well, <laughs> that was from the LA Times that I just looked that up, by the way. It's crazy. What else you um, got? Before we wrap up this amazing first time <laughs> the weekly check-in there's a ton of stuff that i want to talk about i will save it but just as a teaser uh since this can be kind of whatever we want it to be I, I figured that we could also talk about stuff here that we would not normally talk about on our show mm -hmm. for instance video games or books or other shows and movies that maybe we wouldn't either not have that much to say about or don't want to talk about on the normal show. This could be a place where we just talk about what we're watching. Like, as an example, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake finally came out after, like, 15 years. Oh, wow. Uh, I played it. I kind of want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, I read some books that were really good, and uh, I don't mind giving book recommendations here. Uh, podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I know you do too. Mm -hmm. um, so this might be a good place to throw some podcast recommendations out. I mean, I'm always looking for more personally. Yeah, um, yeah same here. And uh, like, like, okay, here's an example. I started watching One Piece. I had been putting that off for a long time because uh, I won't get into it now. I'll save that discussion. But, like, 
I didn't finish it. That show has like hundreds, multiple hundreds of episodes at this point. Holy shit. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm on like episode four or five or something, six maybe. Uh, so like, I'm not, I can't give a comprehensive view of it, but maybe I'll talk about like, here's what I think after watching six episodes of the show. That's like literally the ba- the longest running manga and anime of all time. Wow. You know, uh, okay, but like. I don't like I'm not going to talk about that on our regular show and and it's like I'm not going to watch a thousand episodes by next week but maybe I'll right. be like yeah here's you know here's uh a little bite out of what I've been something like that you know yeah no that that'll be that'd be cool sweet a little teaser a little cliffhanger if you will yes uh clone wars season 7 I think like on Disney plus they like brought it back for one more season because they had been, you know, when it was coming out, they'd been canceled. And then um, anyway, that's a whole other discussion, but like that just wrapped up. And of course I watched it. So it's like, okay, I'll talk about that a little bit. And it's like, that's not, not something because with the weekly format, we could also stay current. We don't, we don't need to like wait for, you know, maybe we'll say, Oh, I'm going to talk about this at length later, but we could at least be like, this is going on right now. It's kind of like a hot topic Mm -hmm. or whatever. Like we could just mention it. So it's like, we're staying current. Right. But, uh, it's a free for all. (laughs) We can do whatever the hell we want. It's a, it's a variety show. (laughs) (laughs) I guess so, yeah. So anyway, those are my th- those are my thoughts. Nice. Well, I think we've successfully done it this time. In fact, you let us know, people. Come on. Either comments in the sections or... Oh, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like Mike said earlier, um, our email address, which we'll put in the bio or whatever it's called. The, the yeah, and then we will come back next week with another check-in. Yes. You don't have to be productive during quarantine. Uh, like, that's not all there is to life. So, like, right. don't stress yourself out. I'm not talking to you, John, although this, although feel free to take whatever you will. But the, you, the viewer, like, what I, what I don't, like, I say that this series is, like, another good way to kind of keep a little bit of accountability to be like you know if there's something that I want to do with in the next week related to the channel I can always be like you know how let's check in how did I do with that but I don't want it to be some sort of extra pressure that I that we need to feel like we're being super productive because this these times are stressful enough so I, I don't want it to become that yeah um so don't get that idea <laughs> Uh, any any other final thoughts, John? I actually do want to leave on one final um, sad thought, but uh, we lost an amazing person earlier this week, and I wanted to just take this moment to hold this button up here, if I may, and say that Jerry Stiller was the uh, was an amazing comedian. He was more than that; he was an amazing man. And uh, Serenity Now, Insanity Later. But the man's having serenity now, so. Serenity now! <laughs> R.I.P. I guess uh, that would be a good segment to add. It was the news. Ooh, yes. <laughs> beep, 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 Another, another uh, complete ripoff of a uh, podcast that I listened to where they, they had to introduce a news segment at the front of it. <laughs> And they went beep, 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 beep. I guess there's yes, they did. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's a reason why, uh, as we just discovered. Not, I like the call out. Um, I'll just say, stay at home if you can. I know not all of us are privileged enough to. So if you cannot, then please be safe out there. Wear your mask. Wear your fucking mask. I know. Stay the fuck at home if you can. 
Wear it over your nose, motherfuckers. I'm yeah, sorry, don't pull not- it down off your face. The whole point is to keep it in front of your nose and mouth. Uh, also, uh, respect people's space. The whole point is to stay distance. If yep. you want to come talk to me, don't fucking walk up in my personal space. That's like a, not the. That's like the whole point is to stay the yeah. fuck away. I know, I know. Uh, hey, Mike, hey, Mike, how are you, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Wash your hands. Uh, if you are an essential worker who is still going into work, or uh, you, you definitely need to be paid accordingly. Yes, shout out to my sister, Cassandra, who is a nurse, a COVID-19 nurse in Virginia, working her ass off every day. Um, same mask for what, like the last two weeks? It's insane. So yeah. Sorry, I'm fine. I didn't... No, no problem. Thanks, Cassandra. I think that's it. I think that's all, folks. <laughs> I feel good about this. <laughs> cool. Me too. Well, I guess we should probably uh, end in the old quality assured vein. Vein? Yeah, that's the word, right? <laughs> Where I, I is it going to work? Or we're going to cut this part right here. Because I have to cut it. Because remember, I said if I say it first and then you say it, it'll simultaneously be quality assured films. Oh, so I, I didn't. No, I did not remember that. So I'll say it first and then you say it. And then whenever I edit us, I'll just put us together at the same exact time. <laughs> and that'll only take me a minute. Trust me. <laughs> Mike's like, don't, don't edit. No me. editing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? I'm John. I'm Mike. And we are quality, quality assured. assured films. Oh, Wait. you're going to say it first, then I'm going to say it. Sorry, I didn't tell you who was saying it first. All right, ready? You go. You go first. Ready? <laughs> I'm John. I'm Mike. Oh, yeah, I wasn't looking. Sorry, let's do the whole thing over again. Well, there you have this it. This is all staying in. <laughs> He's right, and this is so hard for me as as editing. It's so hard to... But, all right. Um, right. I'm John. I'm Mike. And we are... Quality Assured Films. Quality Assured Films. <laughs> put it together. Roll it. Quality, Quality Assured, assured Films. films. <laughs> Bye. We're done. See ya.